Hi, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. We're going to keep talking now about stable coins and how important they are to the ecosystem and how a few of them work and, and why those are important and where we see those going. First, we want to tell you uh, we keep putting out th this content, these videos, we keep talking about topics like stable coins, and we're going to continue to talk about stable coins for several days. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos and be able to see them right when they come out, hit that subscribe button down there and, and you'll get them immediately. You'll get access to these videos immediately when we release them. You'll keep seeing more of what we have because we have so much to talk about. There's just a never-ending supply of topics on blockchain, crypto, DeFi, investing, all these things that we want to tell you about. So subscribe, uh, find us on Twitter at Interaxis8, uh, and you'll get more of this content, more of the things that we're, that we're talking about, and you can interact with us, tell us maybe a, a little bit more of what you want to hear. But after that, we're going to keep talking about stable coins. So in a previous uh, lesson, we talked about stable coins and why we even need them, how the U.S. Uh, dollar has really become kind of the stable coin of the world. It's the one that everyone in the world, it's the currency of the world. It's how international commerce is done uh, worldwide. Uh, and so now what we have is stable coins, and it's an effort to have this programmable money, the idea that we, we need to have money, the, the idea of a dollar, but be able to put it into smart contracts, be able to transact with it on chain, whether that chain is Ethereum or some other chain, but we need to transact in that, in that dollar, uh, dollar denoted token on chain so that we don't have the, the currency risk, we don't have that volatility risk that we saw with Bitcoin and even Ether. Um, we, we can know that if I'm going to transact with someone and that transaction might not take just a few seconds, but it might take days, weeks, months, uh, and it's going to be denoted in some currency, it needs to be denoted in dollars. And if that dollar is then translated into some sort of programmable money, now I can assign it to smart contracts. Now I can tag it to smart contracts. On top of that, we can send and receive it over the crypto rails, over the blockchain rails, and go around the banks. Uh, and, and do that so we don't have all that fees and friction. So I can send money any day, anytime, 24-7, and I don't have to worry about ACH and SWIFT and all, all these other uh, banking rails that have been built that, that accumulate more friction and more fees on me and, and, on, and on those that I'm trying to pay and those that I'm trying to receive money from. So with that, we're going to talk about a couple um, versions of programmable money that are uh, tr attempt to peg a dollar, uh, attempt to mirror a U.S. dollar, and that is USDT and USDC. So USDT is more commonly known as Tether, and Tether really came about uh, when, when we looked when when you started to have all this trading on the centralized exchanges, all the exchanges where people were, would go in. Uh, use Bitcoin, get into these exchanges, and then trade Bitcoin against other cryptocurrencies. So what would happen is I might go something like Coinbase, right, and I would put in my, you know, $100 and I'd get Bitcoin, and then I'd take Bitcoin over to Binance, and on Binance now I want to trade. Now, of course, I'm not telling you you have to use these exchanges. All I'm saying is this is how it might get done, and all honesty, this is how it got done for me. Okay, so I, I put in my $100, I get my Bitcoin, I, I send that eventually over to Binance. Of course, this took like five days for the money to get there and for them to allow me to transfer it. Um, I would send it over to Binance. Now on Binance, I can trade Bitcoin for ETH, I can trade it for BAT, I can trade it for Ripple, whatever I want to do. I can trade Bitcoin against all these others. But at some point, I might go, look, I don't want it to be in any cryptocurrency. I think crypto is going to go down. I need it to go to dollars. Okay. But the problem is Binance, Bittrex, Wobi, like all these exchanges, they can't hold all those dollars. They can't make fiat to crypto transactions. That's not what they're there for. They don't need to go through the regulations and the money uh, transmitter license and all those issues that come with having and transmitting fiat currency. So what happened is we created Tether. USDT is just a, a ERC, uh, a, an Ethereum token that represents a dollar. And initially the, the idea was for Tether to, to be backed by dollars, for there to be a US dollar backing every single Tether coin, which 
early on might not have seemed all that hard because there weren't that many people trading. The global market for cryptocurrencies wasn't that big. But starting in 2017, really, is when it just exploded and so many other people were trading. And, it, and all these people were putting Bitcoin and, and ETH and such on these exchanges and at some point trying to trade them out for Tether because they were doing you know, some sort of uh, algorithmic trading or, the, or they were charting and, and trading, you know, um, uh, technical trading, and at some point they wanted to get out. And the, the exchanges couldn't let them go to dollars, of course, so they had to go to Tether. Well, there was so much Tether being needed that USDT couldn't be, they, they couldn't bring in enough fiat currency dollars to back all the Tether, but they just kept minting Tether. So now, I could trade Bitcoin, whatever it is, not, not all of them, but a lot of them would trade against Tether and, and it looked like it was a dollar, it acted like a dollar and, they, and, and it became kind of an accounting entry for Binance and for all the exchanges that USDT essentially meant that I had a dollar. And so it traded against Bitcoin and ETH as if it were a US dollar when in fact it was just a token. So in that way they could account for it easily because it was on chain. They could very easily do that without having to hold all those dollars. And there really wasn't any place that you could go and trade out your tether for real dollars anyway. You couldn't send it back to Coinbase and, and have a dollar go into your bank account for, for quite a while. So what you had to do is it, w it was just a way for you to trade against a dollar. So if you thought the, current, the, the Bitcoin was going to go down, you just get out and get into USDT. But if you ever wanted to get back into Coinbase or Cash App or whatever else, you had to go back from Tether to Bitcoin and then move your Bitcoin over and then go and, and then in Coinbase go from Bitcoin to US dollars and back into your bank account. Okay, that's how it went. So Tether was essentially a token that was created now as an accounting entry. That's all it is. It's a token that denoted an accounting entry at some point. Now it's kind of taken on a life of its own. There, were, there was a big uh, to do uh, last year that said that Tether, you know, they're in an audit, there really weren't U.S. dollars backing every Tether coin. And people kind of got up in arms about it. But what's happened is the exchanges have been using Tether for so long that it, it just got to be it's worth a dollar because the exchanges say it's worth a dollar because they're using so many of these tokens to denote a dollar that, that we can trade against it that if it were to somehow collapse, if it were to somehow be worth 80 cents all of a sudden, the entire cryptocurrency market would have a huge issue because now all of a sudden that you know I, I let's say Bitcoin is trading at ten thousand US dollars per Bitcoin, but but Tether is worth only eighty cents. What does that do on that exchange? All of a sudden that completely changes the valuation on the exchange because it's worth ten thousand dollars, but maybe it's worth twelve thousand tether. Well, Tether's supposed to be worth a dollar, so how do I account for that in my technical trading? How do I account for that in terms of being an oracle? And it's too hard. So now, USDT is essentially worth a dollar just because all the exchanges in the world need it to be. They can't afford for it not to be worth a dollar. Now what we've seen, and, and by the way, Tether is without a doubt the biggest stablecoin. There's, there's more USDT, there's more market cap of USDT than any other stablecoin. And it's really not backed by a whole lot, except again, all these exchanges really needed to keep being worth a dollar. What's happened is people have started taking Tether off of the exchanges because other decentralized exchanges and such have started recognizing and say, look, we can create lending against USDT. We can create borrowing of USDT because you can take your USDT back into the exchange and, and trade if you want. So what people have started doing is saying, okay, even though it's not really backed by anything, but the full faith of all these exchanges worldwide, we're still going to use it like it's a dollar because we know at this point there's too much money tied up that it can't be worth less. So it's really just, it's worth a dollar because we have to have faith that these exchanges are going to keep it worth a dollar and they're going to honor the price. They're going to honor that if, it, if something outside of the exchange is worth $10,000, if Bitcoin is worth $10,000, it's worth 10000 Tether. So that's a, a bit about how Tether works. Okay, so that is a little bit... Uh, in contrast to USDC, again, not to be confused, and it's really important that if you have USDT in one of your uh, exchanges, US dollar tether, 
and you want to send it to, say, Coinbase because you want to get your money out, you can't send USDT to a USDC address. Your money will be lost. Okay, they are different cryptocurrencies. They are different chains. They are, they, if you send this to this address, your money is gone. I say that because I know someone who did that. It's a very easy mistake to make. Okay, so now we're gonna go USDC, US dollar coin. US dollar coin was created by the, the crypto company Circle with the idea that every coin is actually going to be backed by a dollar. Now what they've done is they have actually got bank accounts and they actually have fiat currency backing every one of these USDC. So they get one US dollar in, it creates one USDC. This is audited every month. So every month Grant Thornton goes in and says, yes, you have an equal number of USDC to uh, fiat to, to dollars. We have this, we see this many dollars in the bank and you have this many coins outstanding. Okay, Coinbase started using USDC. So now when I'm on Coinbase, I can actually buy USDC. So if I wanna get in quickly, I can take you know 100 US dollars and I can quickly buy 100 USDC. If I buy $100 worth of Bitcoin and it's sitting there at Coinbase and I decide I wanna get out of this, I think Bitcoin's run up, I can transfer to USDC and I don't have to put this back in my bank account. I'm not converting it to dollars, I'm converting it to this coin. Now I can send this coin outside of Coinbase. I can send it off the exchange. I can send it to, to another wallet. I can send it to a crypto wallet. And so now what we're seeing is um, people are having a lot of faith in USDC because it's actually backed by, a, do by a, a real US dollar. So what Circle has said is we're going to put off the monetary policy onto the Fed, onto the US Fed. They're gonna decide what a dollar is worth. They're gonna decide the basket of goods that, that we can buy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take your fiat dollar and we're gonna create programmable dollars. And once you have this programmable dollar, they have developers, you can create applications to where uh, you can accept payments, send payments, you can actually lend. So we're seeing lending against USDC, we're seeing borrowing of USDC, we're seeing payments, uh, we're seeing uh, liquidity pools, all these, all these parts of USDC because it's programmable money. There are also applications being built to accept it as payment, right? So now I can go buy my coffee. And let's say my coffee is $4, right? And if I paid with a credit card, the credit card company might charge, you know, two, two and a quarter percent, you know, there are other charges. So the, the coffee shop might only get $3.90 out of that. But it, maybe if I pay in USDC, maybe they'll get $3.99 which doesn't seem like a big deal until you add up how many thousands and thousands and thousands of cups of coffee, and this ends up making a big difference, potentially. If someone builds the application to say, we'll accept USDC, then I can go the same way I do with Apple Pay and my credit card, I can hit USDC and, ha and, and pay them right there at the register in USDC, and it's going over the crypto rails, right? Over the Ethereum rails and not necessarily over the SWIFT and ACH and all the Visa and, and all the banking rails, and that's the whole point, isn't it? Is to get rid of some of the fees and friction. Now, the interesting thing is that, again, they've outsourced monetary policy to the Fed. They've said, we're gonna go with whatever the Fed is because the world transacts in dollars anyway, and in all honesty, we need people to dip their feet in a little bit at a time. And going from US dollars straight to transacting in the world in Bitcoin was too hard. We're gonna go from US dollars to USDC, and we're gonna allow people to start attaching you, this programmable money to smart contracts and start issuing their contracts using USDC and start payments in USDC. So we're gonna back it. We're gonna say, look, you, you guys can can rest easy knowing that we have one dollar in the bank for every USDC coin token out there. So go transact, go program the money, go create the smart contracts and feel good knowing that this is always going to be worth a dollar. And then we can take our baby steps in. We don't have to jump straight into fully programmable dollar, fully programmable algorithmically created US dollar or, or dollar uh, equivalent token 
that doesn't have a dollar to back it up. We don't have to worry about the behaviors and the incentives and, every, and the algorithms and everything else. We say one equals one, go create whatever you're going to create. And there has been a huge uptick in the usage of USDC, again, for liquidity pools, for payments, for lending, because some businesses and some people see it as safer because it's actually backed by a dollar as opposed to some of the other programmable ones that, and, and algorithmic ones that we'll talk about uh, in the next few days. So anyway, that's a little bit about USDT, which is, which is US dollar tether, and USDC, which is US dollar coin. Um, we hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give us any comments below. Let us know what you think. If you have questions, we're happy to answer them. Follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. Info at interaxis.io is a website. We have some exciting things coming out, some uh, courses coming out for financial advisors. We want to teach your financial advisor all about crypto and digital assets so they can help you be part of your financial plan. So follow us there, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you in the next video.